This is not a fringe history episode. This is a black history episode of the Hometown Haunts podcast. Tonight, we celebrate the life of the very first African American woman to become a dentist in the United States, who was brought up, educated, and practiced right here in Cincinnati. She was an example of achievement and inspiration for others to follow, people wrote. We are talking about Dr. Ida Gray Nelson Rollins. <laughs> everyone and welcome to another fantastic episode of the Cincinnati Cabinet of Curiosities presents the Hometown Haunts podcast. I am your host Kat Loco and tonight with me in the shadows are Christina Wald and Jen Kohler. They'll be joining me shortly. A little bit about our social media. You can follow us at Sin Cabinet Curio on Twitter and at Cincy Cabinet of Curiosities on Instagram. And of course you can send us your hometown haunted stories and weird history, fun fringe tales, to hometownhauntedmail at gmail.com. Also, please join our Facebook group, Hometown Haunts, and chat with other spooky history lovers just like you. There. It's fun. We get a lot of people chatting with us and giving us suggestions for topics for shows in the future. We're an official podcast that can be heard wherever you listen to podcasts. Um, thank you, Jen. And if you want to see us while what we're doing while we're recording, you can also watch our YouTube shows. Hi, everyone. Uh, <laughs> finding a, You can find us on all of these different platforms by searching Cincinnati Cabinet of Curiosities. That's C-I-N-C-I-N-N-A-T-I, Cabinet of Curiosities. And please rate and review us so other spooky history lovers just like yourself can find us. Link, of course, is in the show notes. We got some news. Um, we are taking... Well, which one do you want to start with? We, we're we mailing out the current Cincinnati Cabinet of Curiosities Trails, Trains, and Terror. A lot of them were mailed out. We're still working on fulfilling some of the orders from last October's Kickstarter. So yay. Um, and on that note, we have... The topics for the next Cincinnati Cabinet of Curiosities comic and comics anthology, which will be coming out in hopefully end of this year, 2022. We'll be kickstarting that in October. And the topics we'll be introducing to everyone are the Darby Lee Cemetery in Mount St. Joseph, Ohio, the Witch Hill in Alexandria, Kentucky, the Delta Queens resident ghost on the Ohio River, the Trenton Hatchet Man in Trenton, Ohio, the Oxford Light of Oxford, Ohio, and the Allendale Train Tunnel in Ellesmere, Kentucky. Here's the fun part. If you like to write, or you like to illustrate, or if you like to write and illustrate, you can join us on this fun project. Uh, if anyone you know or yourself want to participate in this year's comics anthology, we are taking proposals until February 28th. So we got eight days now of this year, 2022, to submit your proposals. All the information about that is on our website, which is cincycuriosities.com. Um, we do request that it is safe for work content, so PG-13 or lighter, and no gore, no body horror, nothing like that. But we love to um, hear your stories and retellings of the aforementioned stories that I have listed. Um, also, Final thing before we get into tonight's show. Uh, where's my bullet point? There it is. You can hear me, Kat, speak at the University of Cincinnati Common University on March 15th, 2022 from 8.30 to 8 p.m. The cost is $39, but it includes a copy of issue one and two, the Cincinnati Cabinet of Curiosities. Plus, there's an opportunity to have me sign those books. I'll be talking about the research that goes into both the book and this podcast um, some of my ghost stories from around the area, our process, and how we put the entire comic anthology together. It will be a fun night of ghost stories and the arts. So we'll have a link in the show notes. And uh, also, please wear a mask while attending. Thank you, everyone. All right. Are we ready for tonight's show? To listen about the wonderful and fantastic and inspirational Dr. Ida Gray Nelson Rollins. I do want to mention that, as you may notice if you watch our YouTube channel, we are three white women. 
we are talking about black history. We do understand that this is a little questionable and may make your head tilt a little bit to the side. We are going to do our best. We are learning lots. And Ida was a fantastic person and her story certainly needs to be told a whole lot more. I think a book needs to be written about her. Yeah. So we're talking about the life and times of Dr. Ida Gray Nelson Rollins. And sources for tonight's show are the Cincinnati Magazine, Black Past, African American Registry, Birth and Fletcher Orthodontics, our historian and friend to the show, Greg Hand, the Syndicuse Museum at the University of Michigan, and Wikipedia. The Syndicuse Museum, I believe, is the Dental History Museum at the University of Michigan. I may get people writing in correcting me on that. So, Ida Gray was I am born going to put us all Tennessee in our little wayback machine and take us back Jenny to Gray. March 4th. And her father is unnamed, but was a white man who had no interest in their welfare. Shortly after Ida's birth, however, Jenny passes away, and Ida, now an orphan, was brought here to Cincinnati to be raised by her aunt, Carolyn Gray, and her children, Howard, Susan, and Mary. And from all the accounts that I read, they were roughly similar age. So Ida now has what would be cousins, but you're raised like your siblings. So that actually from speaking as an only child, that sounds fun. Anyway, moving on. Carolyn Gray was a seamstress who lived on George Street, which still exists. It's located a block south of the Catholic Cathedral in downtown Cincinnati between 7th and 6th Street, just off of Blum Street. And it skirted the eastern edge of the red light district of Cincinnati. All four children attended Cincinnati's public schools. Their mother, Caroline, really made sure they got their education. And Ida graduated from a segregated Gaines High School in 1887. However, all the kids were contributing to the Gray Family Fund. And during that time while she was in high school, Ida worked for a dentist's office that was right in her neighborhood. So um, she actually worked part-time for the dental office of William and Jonathan Taft. Now, when you hear the Taft family and you're in Cincinnati, your ears perk up because we happen to have a few presidents that share that last name. These men were not related at all to that Taft family. This is a Taft family from Massachusetts that were farmers that moved to Ohio. And Jonathan and William... They were just interested in dentistry and became dentists back in the 1850s. So that's who this is. Completely different Taft family. Uh, and I was, I actually did do some research to see if they were at all connected and nope. So William and Jonathan Taft DDS, who had a clinic around the corner of, from her house, Ida's house on 7th Street. Dr. Jonathan Taft had been a dean of the Ohio College of Dental Surgery which was located just around another corner on College Street. Both William and Jonathan Taft were supporters of women becoming dentists and encouraged Ida to study dentistry. And she got an interest in it from working part-time. And it was a fairly new and blossoming industry. So there was um, University of Michigan's department, which comes in to play a little bit later. They were celebrating when they got their college established back in 1875. So this was a really, really new science, basically. Uh, Dr. Jonathan Taft had been recruited by the University of Michigan to start their College of Dentistry, as I just said, in 1875. And he had the first female graduates of the school. Well, he didn't have them, but they graduated in 1880. So almost as soon as this college opened, he was welcoming women in to become dentists and become doctors. And at the same time, even though he was up in Ann Arbor, Michigan, leading this college, he still had a clinic and office here in Cincinnati. And that is the place where Ida worked. And William just basically helmed the ship while he was up in Michigan. All right. Ida took an interest in dentistry, and she applied for admission to the University of Michigan's dental school, and Dr. William Taft ment mentored her to prepare Ida for the entrance exams. She was accepted in 1887. We actually have a copy of her acceptance note uh, that we may pop up sometime. 
Um, and she basically went to college right after high school and because she graduated in 1887 and she went into the dental program in 1887. Um, and in 1890, she was the first black woman to earn the degree of doctor of dental surgery in the United States. And I love, we also have a photo of her in her graduating class. And there are a few other women in that graduating class. She's not the only one. And um, it, it's, they all look so young and spry and just full of hopes and dreams and wanting to take all those cavities out of your mouth. So yeah, it, it's, I, I love it. It's just a great, there weren't a whole lot. There's maybe what, 40 people in that photo. So Dr. Ida Gray then returned to Cincinnati to open her first dental practice on Ninth Street. Now, mind you, she had three years of dental office manager experience. So she ran a really good ship and she became very popular as a dentist in the city. She quickly became popular because, well, she was really skilled. She loved what she did and she had a great rapport with everyone who was a patient. And she saw everyone of any age and in any ethnic background in the city. So she became very popular. And of course, newspapers came and talked about her wonderful skill and how great she was as a dentist. There were so many great reviews from people who were her patients. So one uh, such review from the Richmond Planet wrote, her blushing winning way makes you feel like finding an extra tooth anyway to allow her to pull. Another quote reads, as a result of strict attention to business and the thoroughness of her work, she is kept constantly busy. Cincinnatians are proud of their Afro-American lady dentist, and she is in every respect proves herself worthy of the confidence and admiration, writes Ringwood's Afro-American Journal. Another quote reads, on returning to her home, she opened a very cozy office on 9th Street and has in these two years built up a large practice, having as many white as colored patients, notes Dr. Monroe Alphys Majors in a book he wrote about her and other black women around the country in 1893. Dr. Gray on becoming so popular in Cincinnati became a prominent member of the community and it's evidenced by the numerous times her name shows up in the social columns of the time. So her name pops up a lot in the Cincinnati commercial newspaper and basically what are the gossip columns, but also like the society notes, like so-and-so did this here and so-and-so ball was there and they went. It It's fun reading through those columns just because you get a good slice of life of that era. She also visited Chicago frequently. I do not blame her. Chicago is awesome. And during one of her trips, she meets a young man named Jane Sanford Nelson, who is a lawyer and a veteran of the Spanish-American War. And her marriage to James is announced in the Cincinnati commercial. They write, the marriage of Dr. Ida Gray to James Nelson took place last Thursday morning at the home of the bride in at 261 West 9th Street. It was quite an affair. Reverend H.D. Powered, D.D., performed the ceremony, after which the company partook of a light breakfast. They departed for Chicago, where, where they will reside. She got a write-up for her wedding, which I don't think a lot of people did back then, like in the society papers. Dr. Ida Gray Nelson became the first Black dentist in Chicago period. There hadn't been one before. And she set up a practice on the South Side, which was a predominantly Black neighborhood. But she served clientele of all ages and ethnicities, just like here in Cincinnati. And just like Cincinnati, they loved her. Just like as written before, she was so skilled and just had great relationships with all of her uh, patients that they just loved her. And she especially did really well with little kids being known as being very gentle and patient with them because going to the dentist is scary. It's always going to be scary. There's drills and weird sounds coming at your head. But she did a really good job of calming everyone down. And she worked for a really long time in Chicago. 
Uh, while her office was open, she mentored other Black women to become dentists. One patient, Olive M. Henderson, became the second African-American dentist in Chicago. And uh, Chicago also had a dental school at Northwestern. So I, I don't know if that's where Henderson went, though. Dr. Ida Gray Nelson and James were active in the social circles around Chicago, just like here in Cincinnati, and their name pops up attending balls, gathering, and medical conventions around the city in the newspapers frequently. And for the, a Chicago celebration of the Emancipation Proclamation, 30 Years of Freedom, Dr. Nelson represented dentistry among the goals African Americans can now achieve, including a medical doctor, lawyer, editor, and Christina Nye's favorite, and Jen's too. Artists! Yes, rock those artists. Unfortunately, James passed away on March 11th, 1926, and she retired from her practice in 1928. In 1929, Ida married William Rollins, a railroad porter who became a plasterer. He died on June 20th, 1944, after being involved in a motor vehicle accident. Ida never remarried after William's death and did not have children with either of her husbands. Ida Gray Nelson Rollins participated in a number of women's organizations and served as president of the Professional Women's Club of Chicago. She was a vice president of the 8th Regiment Ladies Auxiliary and member of the Phyllis Wheatley Club, a group organized to maintain the only black women's shelter in Chicago. And the Phyllis Wheatley Club was nationwide from my understanding. Fun note about the name Phyllis Wheatley. The club is named after poet Phyllis Wheatley. Brilliant girl who had a wonderful way with words. The University of Cincinnati and the Cincinnati Public Library have copies of her poems. Ida passed away on May 3rd, 1953 at the age of 86. She is buried in Lincoln Cemetery on the city's south side. Every year, the School of Dentistry at the University of Michigan gives an award out in her honor. So, and uh, it's been written a lot when you see medical journals write about her. Doc, with the comment that I re read at the beginning of this episode, Dr. Ida Gray Nelson Rollins is often cited in works as an example of achievement and inspiration for others to follow. And I wholeheartedly agree because she mastered a science back when women were not mastering a lot of sciences. So, Christina and Jen. Come back on. And let's I would say women weren't allowed to master the science. I think that, yeah. Yeah. I really love the encouragement that she was getting, though. Yeah. I, it, it's really interesting. I was, uh, while you were talking, I was uh, looking up some of the history of dentistry. And, um, you know, the, a lot of new innovations were brought to dentistry in the early uh, 1900s like for example novocaine was first brought to this country in 1907 so wow. it's a testament to her ability that uh, people felt more comfortable with her because dentistry was fairly brutal in the late 1800s i mean you know having a toothache was a life and death matter i mean you could die from you know d d you know tooth infections and stuff mm -hmm. and it was really fairly serious. I have a friend that's an expert in American history and said that actually used to be a common form of suicide was dental pain was so bad that people would sometimes kill themselves because there was nothing they could do about it. Oh, and that's no. why you had a dentist like remove the tooth. Um, yeah. But yeah. it was it, until, you know, the early 1900s, it was done with pliers and no kind <gasps> of pain oh. anesthetic at all. I mean, um, right. But well, yeah, you would see that their surgeon, like her degree is for surgery, dental surgery. Yes. Not, yes. not just dentistry. Um, so. And they said actually electricity helped a lot in the early 1900s because then they could electrify drills that would move faster and uh, also cause less trauma. Mm -hmm. um, and dental hygiene was also invented sort of, not invented, but uh, perhaps pioneered in the early 1900s. The idea of maybe cleaning your teeth to c prevent dental decay. Mm -hmm. I mean, they still didn't know a lot about it, but. Um, mm -hmm. it, so were the drills hand powered or like hand cranked? Um, when they did. Before electricity? It, it sounds like that's, that's the case. I think most of the time Ooh. when you had dental problems, they just would pull your tooth. Yeah, um, but yeah. it sounds a lot more pleasant than having a drill being hand cranked yeah, into your mouth. Yeah, I think if you mouth. had, 
if you had issues at all, they just took the tooth out. Um, well, I just had actually... a filling replaced and my head hurt for weeks, mm -hmm. even with, oh, yes. or for a week, even with the Novocaine. So I cannot imagine. Mm -hmm. No. Mm -mm. Well, to tell you how serious <laughs> dental pain was um, before the dentists were prevalent, people did dentistry at home. And I was reading an mm -hmm. article that said people would just take pliers and remove the tooth because that tells you how painful it is that you'd rather have someone take it out than, um, you know, leave it in there because you're in so much pain. Um, Man, they were strong back then. <laughs> well, yeah. I, I mean, mean it, but she might I mean, been... cocaine was also legal back then. So, <gasps> oh, that's true. I forgot about that. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Um, but it's it's interesting because like even in the army, like even into the 60s, they would often remove teeth rather than fill them. Yeah, um, I, I think some people do even if they don't have insurance, it's cheaper mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to just have the tooth pulled. Yeah, uh, back then. But it was probably such a relief to have someone that was really good at it. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Somebody was oh, yeah. gentle and. Uh -huh. didn't make you feel scared for going to the yeah. dentist make it a friendly experience like this this will be fine we'll get the tooth mm -hmm. out and you'll feel a lot better a lot more uplifting not scary mm -hmm. yeah it so, also said there were not dental x-rays till the 1920s hmm. and that yeah. was when they first started to use those to see if you could see infection and stuff like that. Oh, I don't wow. know. Obviously x-rays were probably much less safe back then. <laughs> They're not really that safe now, but they, um, yeah, they were slightly probably much more rough. So yeah. you could get an x-ray and then die several years later of radiation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It Maybe. also said like the early what year the early nineteen hundreds were the first uh times that they used porcelain crowns. Oh, porcelain yeah. crest uh it says in 1903 charles land developed the porcelain jacket crown which covered and protected the entire surface of a tooth wow mm. so uh, this kind of came around the same time that they started using novocaine yeah yeah and i got to see all of that science happen that's I participate cool in it that is awesome yeah, exactly. I wonder if she had any input on like the advancement of procedures and things. I can see her. Think? She went to medical conferences frequently. Yeah. And we have that awesome photo of her in her doctor's gown, like mm -hmm. ready to perform on a guy lounged back in a dentist chair. Uh -huh. I, yeah. I'm just, I love looking at all of the stuff that is just on the periphery. I'm like, <laughs> man, like when there's little mirrors. It looks very steampunky. Mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. <laughs> I was just yeah, like, it does. Wow. I, I wish I had a date for that, but it probably was near the beginning of her practice. But what I love is, unfortunately, well, I don't love. I, I, I misplaced that word. The streets where she lived still exist. They're still used yeah. to this day. Unfortunately, the buildings that she lived in no longer exist. They're all parking garages. I went oh, on my. Google Maps and looked and I was like, Dang nabbit Cincinnati, why? Like all parking garages and uh, the um, street she used to live on is a alley between two parking garages, Georgia Street. So, oh, really? Yeah. yeah, there used to be a beautiful market that was pretty close to there that was torn down a long time ago. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, it, Cincinnati, uh, you know, has lost. I mean, they still are lucky to have a lot of architecture, but they certainly have lost a lot of beautiful architecture as well mm -hmm. yeah. um, i think jeff wrote an article about that market was it yeah in, like kind of near fountain square um or somewhere around that i can't remember what the yeah. street name is i saw a picture of it posted on um old photos of cincinnati and you know i was thinking wow i would have loved to have seen that and it showed some pictures of the stalls and mm -hmm. and stuff That's, like that i wish i had time we could time travel just so we can go back and observe yeah, mm -hmm. not change anything. Just kind of like the t uh, Doctor Who, you know, yeah. just kind of get but in there and just experience it for what it was. It'd be very smelly. You had said that she didn't have any children. Did she mm -hmm. have any? What happened to her brothers and sisters? Do they know if any of them her are cousins? Still, yeah, her cousins. I I mean, they grew up I, kind of like siblings, but there is no mention of her family outside the her high school mm -hmm. years. Um, she's a fascinating person in history that really deserves to have a book written about her, 
Her story, mm-hmm. her life story could be a mini series on HBO. Like mm-hmm. it she, fascinating. And it's an mm-hmm. interesting part of American history that I think it's glossed over a lot because it's immediately post Civil War. Mm-hmm. Like the the Mexican American War doesn't get really mentioned much, especially up here in Cincinnati at mm-hmm. all. Mm-hmm. Um, which I'm just like, that's interesting because I know I have family members that also fought in that. Mm-hmm. And I, many Americans do, and many Spanish people mm-hmm. do as well. And, uh, but like, there's parts of American history that, for whatever reason, just get jumped over. Like the mm-hmm. War of 1812 as well, just gets jumped mm-hmm. over. Like, no one wants to really talk about it too much except for battlefield historians. Um, and this is another one of those that Reconstruction era is only now getting more attention to it by anthropologists, sociologists, and historians. But mm-hmm. it's a fascinating portion of American history. It was America was seeing a lot of change rapidly. You had electricity, you had the trains being built everywhere, you had the great migration from the south, how that impacted everyone in the north. These are all interesting stories that really should be told and mm-hmm. they're not. Well, and then, you know, you're seeing more and more uh, stories told about uh, women that were in the sciences and, um, yeah. you know, that are now, they're telling more of their stories. Um, you had mentioned hidden figures. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, the woman that mm-hmm. was prominent in that actually just died last year. Didn't it? it was yeah. pretty. Yeah. No, um, and, and she didn't get any credit for what she did until recently. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and it seems like they should, they, yeah, yeah, there should be more written about these, uh, topics. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, um, and, and it would be really interesting to know kind of, you know, not only her, her history, but, you know, the time of dentistry that she was in. Mm-hmm. Oh, um, yeah. I mean, that would be kind of an interesting thing to delve into more and, you know, the need of, of dentists and sort mm-hmm. of the, the, a lot of people now, because of, you know, proper dentistry, don't go through the dental pain that people did back then. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah. it really was a life-threatening situation if you had, um, and also a bad dentist, you know, you say, oh, well, what, um, you know, you can, if, if you're particularly grisly, you can go online and see um, unsuccessful uh tooth removal or like oh, some no. of the jaw might come why the would tooth. you want to watch that I, I i didn't say i wanted to watch it it's stuff that like sometimes <laughs> i like mean just anybody you searched and you found oh, yeah no. if you do because because it was you know have it, both of you had your um wisdom teeth removed uh-huh which is no. done usually nicely with you being asleep i don't um, have yeah. wisdom teeth i okay. got laughing gas so did troy troy said that when he got his his um uh, te- his uh, wisdom teeth removed. He said at one point the dentist pulled out a hammer, hammer and a chisel. And what did uh, Troy said? Oh, are you going to do some hammering and chiseling? And he said, Yeah, I am. And he said the dentist got up on him and was like, whack, whack, whack to get the tooth out. And you know, I can't imagine <laughs> it's not it's more just- different than a um, orthopedic surgeon mm-hmm. getting bones back into place or whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I mean, sure. that's those are hard. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this I mean, is it was... when I'm glad I'm a mutant. <laughs> I, I say I'm an X Men, and my superpower is having no wisdom teeth. Yeah, you have enough room in your jaw. Um, no, there, there's just a mutation. Genetic mutations happen, and mm-hmm. I just do not have wisdom teeth. And I oh. am hoping that little dude's the same because it's been nice living without wisdom teeth oh Her i remember teeth never got messed up like nothing uh-huh. it's just i remember don't in them coming in and mm-hmm. me chewing gum on them because it made mm-hmm. it feel better because mm-hmm. basically i was teething mm-hmm. and then i just got ca- a bunch of cavities in them by the time i was like 17 i just had oh, them wow. pulled but mine actually came through mm-hmm. a lot of people have to have them cut out and yeah, i, I had yeah. can't out. imagine that that's got to be more painful. Yeah, I was nineteen, yeah. but I was blissfully asleep for the surgery and that's woke good. up with just a a very sore jaw and asking for shakes. 
Which and my people, mother for all of our, of them. And ice cream. For, for, all of our awesome. listen, for all of our listeners that are now squirming in whatever seat they're in, you'll be happy to know that in my case, the dentists clapped and the nurse techs clapped and were like, congratulations, you have no wisdom teeth. <laughs> so, yes. Yeah. I, I, that's kind of cool. That's, that's cool. Yeah, interesting. Yeah. yeah, I wanted to end that story topic on a much more. Yeah, yeah. I'm <laughs> sorry. It's it's hard to talk about dentistry without being a little bit, you know, grotesque because it is, and and that's the thing that's so admirable about her, you know, taking it up as. But it was probably almost like a necessary evil. She probably saw how necessary it was. To I get wonder into this. if she's like me and just really loves skulls and teeth. And just love mm. looking at teeth because they're the only bits of bone in your body that are exposed. Uh -huh. And that's fascinating. Yeah. So I wonder if she was just like a nerd geek about teeth. Did she collect yeah. teeth? Is there a teeth collection she had? Like it would be it would be not that she bedazzled anything with them, but like <laughs> Does she not, not keep her patience? But if there was like any with like extremely long roots, did she keep those and just put them on her mantle in a secret little box and go, "Yes, I extracted that," or anything like? Like I want to know what her personality, besides driven, was like. And I'm I'm curious. Yeah. That's why a book needs to be written about her. I noticed yeah. one of the places you credited was uh, Greg Hand. I mm -hmm. wonder if he knows of anyone that one could interview because she has to have some family or her husband that might be able to give some insight. Maybe extended family. Um, that could give I mean, it insight. is really lucky in her case that she was covered a lot in the newspaper or a lot of her story would be lost. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. But, you know, somebody like her was probably, I mean, it seems like one thing that was fortunate in her case was that um, she was archived probably more than a lot of people. Yes. And yeah. so that's really fortunate. Um you know, and so maybe there is some sort of like maybe her estate was donated to, um, you know, the dental some, museum that I can't pronounce. Uh, it could have been. It could have been like a like a Annie Jump Cannon, for example, donated all of her writings and uh, like she never married, but she donated all of her stuff to Harvard. So Harvard has her entire collection of writings, mm -hmm. and um, you know personal belongings and stuff like that so you can go see because she was a prolific writer and you can go see her writings there yeah. and so mm -hmm. i wonder if perhaps she bequeathed some of her stuff um to the you know like the hospital she was trained in or like some library or something mm -hmm. like that um well that the could... search is on we will try to discover more about ida yes yes and if anyone in the audience knows more let us know yeah i want to know more I want to know yeah. if she had a teeth collection. <laughs> mm. um, yes. You never know. I mean, what was it? We were just, when we talked to Bob on our last episode, he said that they have that whole room of, of interesting oddities. Well, that means yes. that somewhere on ninth street, there is a medical waste pit full of teeth. Yes. Yes. <laughs> oh yeah. There is somewhere. <laughs> it's interesting. How... That... Oh, go on. I'm just wondering how deep that pit goes. There'd have to be a lot of teeth in there. Yeah. That's true. Uh, where, where, where was the dentist's office? Is that the one or just where she lived? It was on 9th Street. Um, I can find the address. So it was, was close to Court Street? No. Um, Court Street is 9th Street. She was... Night, court and if it was Plum, it was... 261 West 9th Street. Hmm. Okay, so that's kind of close to... Um, like, well, Ninth Street basically is Court Street, and so it's kind of close to where Liberty is. And that's really close to the, um... Like, Washington Platform and that Well, restaurant. not just that. Those are where the pits that they were excavating were mm, off of Liberty. Interesting. So, hmm. um, yeah, that entire area seems to be more well-preserved from that time. Mm hmm So, um, there, like I said, there is an area of... 261 West 9th Street that has probably a medical waste pit underneath it that is several feet deep of teeth. Mm -hmm. hmm. Yeah. Uh, DNA is in teeth, correct? Yes. I'm sorry if I sound uneducated and stupid there. 
No. I always think it's cool when they find old stuff like that if they would just run the DNA on it and just see what comes comes out of it. See if they can make any connections with it. And if they found a pit of teeth, I would hope they would do that. <laughs> <laughs> the pit of teeth. Well, I think well yeah, because, I, I mean, that would just, maybe you could track down a current family member of that. Actually, when I got my grandfather's stuff, there I have some teeth of family members that no idea who they belong to, have a couple gold crowns that have a little bit of something stuck to it. And... I don't know. Can I DNA test that and see? I don't know what it would tell me. Maybe nothing, but I don't know. It might be interesting to know. Fascinating thing. Just mm -hmm. looking on a map, that's what I'm doing. Um, 261 West is where the Cincinnati court, or sorry, City Hall now sits. Oh, hmm. okay. It's, it's not the same address. Um, they're 801 Plum Street. But mm -hmm. basically, Ninth Street's addresses end at around 2.33. And, um, yeah, if you keep going down Ninth Street, West Ninth Street, you run into the Cincinnati City Hall. And mm -hmm. then it never really, by the time it comes back, which is need, near Seed Strategy, whatever that is, those are 8.13. So um, it, it's doesn't exist anymore how would you basically. find that pit i don't know the... well i think he, they 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 excavated those pits when they were about to do some construction over them so they mm. had paid to um, excavate them before they did this so whatever um they worked on is the those buildings are gone obviously and there's buildings yeah. over them now um and that area of town is you know, they're always, I mean, obviously, like, they just built that giant stadium. Mm -hmm, you know, that's mm -hmm. not quite as far west. Um, but, boy, did they uproot a lot of old stuff around there. I mean, they tore up a lot of neighborhoods and, you know, stuff like yeah. that there. Um, that always happens whenever they build anything. Um, and you hope so. that they get a, I mean, and, of course, another big thing in uh, Cincinnati, they tore up, you know, the library. You always see whenever they post pictures of it, it goes viral. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Although, you know, it's hard to say what you could have done with a building like that as cool as those, those, those Harry Potter like, you know, yeah, uh, with they're the, just with completely the, outdated. Well, yeah, I mean, if they were and dangerous, if you, if you were in a wheelchair, obviously, you're not going to be I mean, if they were, I mean, for even the librarians, it was probably a restocking nightmare. I mean, yeah. you'd almost have to use that building for something really different. I mean, they have some spiral staircases like that if you've been to the mercantile library mm -hmm. um it's got some of the old like library type stuff like that used to be in that cincinnati <laughs> one and it's really hard because what the library's function is you know has to change changes with the times and you have to have you know so you would have almost had to have kept that building as more of a museum um at, at, when you built the new stacks um you know yeah. now i mean like, you know well but then that takes up valuable real estate yeah, I wonder if they even use the Dewey Decimal System anymore, because that used to be the classification of books, and now so. you you just look up the title online. <laughs> you know, wow. they probably still have it. I, I'm curious if they well, still yeah, they got to keep it. track of them somehow. Mm -hmm. On where they are, right? I don't know. That's something to that's something to research if they still yeah. if it's still a thing because I know like you don't use it anymore like when you search for books no yeah um because you could but you they, they still would have to have some kind of keyword associated with them mm -hmm. what were yeah. you looking up cat okay so news i was looking at her wedding so her, her wedding was in 1895 in her house on west 9th street so that means it had to be standing in 1895 Cincinnati City Hall was built in 1893, so she would have been watching City Hall be built right next oh, to cool. her, which means that she wasn't in that block, what they took over. She would have been in the next block, which basically, if you stand at Gateway Plaza on West 9th Street and look south, there is a large patch of just park greenery and a driveway, and that's where her house would have stood. So oh, cool. 
technically somebody could take a ground penetrating radar and go at least in this parking lot slash greenery area slash driveway and run it up and down where we would know where the houses were and find a medical waste pit full of teeth. Um, that is also to note that the addresses did not shift in between 1895 and 2022. So, wow. That's impressive. I don't know. I don't know if they have or not, but if the so, address uh, have not, that's where it would be. Did she practice out of her house? She basically, yeah, like the. She, I don't okay. know if it was a townhouse, so like the first floor or the front of the house would have been the office, and then the back or a second floor would have been living quarters. Oh, cool. Okay, so it would be not only a medical waste pit, which usually would probably be in near an alleyway probably near the back of the house. It would also be next to her outhouse, her privy shaft, as we have mm -hmm. now know they're called, and also just a family waste pit. So also the privy shaft. So, yeah. Oh, so interesting. Yeah, there may be more than just one out there. So. Mm -hmm. Well, that's something to ask about old photos in Cincinnati and see if that anyone has really... pictures of that street back then. I mean, mm -hmm. there's probably pictures somewhere. I oh, mean. I'm sure there is. Cincinnati was very photographed. Yes. So, yeah. yeah. And, and photography was just kind of starting to be popular there, you know, among, uh, you know, people. That sounds mm -hmm. really funny, but, you know, when, it, when did the brownie camera come out? It was like, that was what the original cameras were called um, because they were in a brown case. And um, um, I should know that from my. Uh, oh, yeah. Photo history class mm -hmm. I took in college, but I do not. I mean, there was, um, that was one thing that, um, Annie Jump Cannon had was she had one of the early cameras and went to the World Fair, um, in the late 1800s, um, and used one I of have those a brownie cameras camera. to take Oh, do you really? Mm hmm. Um, my uncle gave it to me years ago. I've never used it, oh. but, um, yeah, they came out. Yeah, in I would love to. Huh? They came out in 1900. 1900. Wow. Maybe she maybe she had one. Um, Who knows? Yeah, that 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 was what like one of the first commercially available ones that mm -hmm. that people used yeah. to take pictures. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and it, that, I mean that's a that's an interesting part of history itself, also. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, but yeah, we'll have to. Yeah, some of our listeners will have to give us an idea more yeah. about yeah. her history and about that school. I mean, actually, was there much on the history of that school when you? looked it up oh yeah like it's the university of michigan they, oh, they okay. documented everything so yeah uh, u of m has a lot of stuff um and they, they have, might even have her, her collection yeah some of the photos that i sent you of her class photo and her acceptance note and all that because it wasn't a full letter it's actually kind of sad it's just like ida gray has been accepted on this date and she comes from cincinnati ohio it, it's just very plain like that but beautiful script kind of nerd nerded about that but yeah they have an entire um website portion of their museum dedicated to her mm. because oh, cool. she was an important person in the school's history mm -hmm. so um, funny thing could not find the other women who graduated it was <laughs> mostly focused on her so but she also did a remarkable led a remarkable life and did so much so Mm hmm. Well, yeah. that's fascinating. Hoping, hopefully, somebody can, you know, give us some e even more, and we'll put some of the photos up mm -hmm. too, so people can see them. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. You know, and we didn't mean to get too much into the nitty gritty of early dentistry, but yeah, we didn't mean to gross mm -hmm. you out by you that. Know, the, it was, yeah. it was just you know, a, a time when it, it could be pretty brutal. But that oh, tells, yeah. just tells you how bad the pain is that people are willing to you know, see a professional. Yeah, because there was just nothing you could do to take care of the pain from it, from mm -hmm. your dental mm -hmm. stuff. And then, you know, that might be one thing that would make you want to become a dentist if you saw family members suffer with toothaches. And that could be. And stuff. That's kind of a popular 1800s trope, seeing somebody with the rag tied around their head mm -hmm. because yeah. uh, they were in pain from a sore tooth. Yeah. Or maybe she just really loved teeth. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, I've been through that tooth pain. I, I've had two root canals and it was the worst. The root canals itself were fine. It was mm -hmm. the pain 
you really? know, before I had them, that was bad. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Root canals aren't fun. I don't, I had dental pain, but I don't know if I had it at the level that you yeah, are describing. Yeah, I have not. I would break out into a cold sweat every time I would eat. And it, I had one on each side. Oh, oh my goodness. Yeah, it was, it was did bad. Did it hurt? And, did, go ahead. Oh, did, did it, it hurt, hurt every, well, even when you weren't eating too? I mean, it was. Oh, it, yeah. Yeah. Did it, and, did it uh, get abscessed? No, thankfully. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, I had had cavities from, you know, childhood and I used to chew gum a lot that was coated in sugar and I didn't realize it was sugar. And okay. I think that contributed to a lot of cavities and it just got to the point where they were sitting on top of my nerves or just hitting mm -hmm. the nerves, right. That they had to go. <laughs> Oof. Wow. Mm -hmm. I remember my first root canal, my tooth didn't hurt that much, but I woke up one morning and my jaw was swollen. It wasn't fully, Oof. like it was just slightly swollen. And, mm -hmm. and I was like, well, this is weird. So I called my dentist and I said, I said, my jaw's a little bit swollen. Um, should I come in or, and they were like, we can get you in in half an hour. And I was like, what? That's kind of fast. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's not and good was, to have well, a swollen jaw. <laughs> yeah. So what they did was they did like, you know, they give you antibiotics and they did like immediate uh, stuff, I guess, to keep it from, because if I hadn't done anything, I probably would have had a jaw swollen out really big. But yeah. since I went in right away, uh, they, they immediately intervened. And then I had the root canal a couple of weeks later, but uh -oh. yeah. yeah, you don't want to mess so around. So tell us like your that. dental horror stories. <laughs> yes, <laughs> we have become that podcast. Please yeah. tell us your dental horror stories. I... Or your dental happy stories. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> don't know where we could go with that. Like, what kind of treasures did they find in your mouth? No, that is wrong. That's well, you not... know, I mm. mean, you know, I consider my root canal was actually a dental happy story because they got it fixed before it well, became yeah. a big problem. There you go. Yeah. You know, so they were able to see me immediately. They fixed it. And, okay. you know, I got the root canal a couple of weeks later and it was all fine. It wasn't a dental tragedy. It was just part mm -hmm. of life as a human. Yeah. Well, and I always say <laughs> if I'm, ever in desperate need of money i can just pull my crowns out because they're gold and just melt them down. oh that's an image i didn't want to think about but now it's in my well, there you go <laughs> or, or here's another thing like let's it's an investment <laughs> an investment can you hear the radio transmissions coming through your crowns nope mm -mm. no nope, the aliens do not speak to me Yes, but if they but do, my cat does stare at me it. like she's reporting back to her alien overlords. So mm -hmm. who knows? Mm -hmm. okay. Or at least cat overlords. Yeah, cat overlords. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> well, on that note, yes. No. Thank you, everyone, for joining us on this fantastic episode of the Cincinnati Cabinet of Curiosities presents the Hometown Haunts podcast. You can find us at Sin Cabinet Curio on Twitter at Cincy Cabinet of Curiosities on Instagram, and of course, you can share your own dental horror stories or happy stories at hometownhauntedmail at gmail.com or you could just message them to us on twitter or instagram and we will collect them and maybe make an episode out of it i'm laughing because i know this is gonna happen or you can share them on our hometown haunts facebook group we love to hear from you so thank you for joining us tonight good night and stay spooky Bye -bye. goodbye Bye.